Okay, today we are going to write the equation of the line of best fit. Some of the stuff you're going to see today is a little review. And some of it just looks a little different. So let's just get going. So this first part, we are recalling, we're remembering back, what are the point and the slope of this equation right here? What does this equation look like it is? It looks like point-slope form. Remember point-slope form goes like this. y minus y1 equals m slope times x minus x1. So let's start with the slope. The slope's the easiest. Which of these numbers is your slope? The slope is 5. That's the number that is smushed in front of the parentheses. Okay, and your point is always the x1, y1. The x coordinate goes behind this minus, the y coordinate goes behind this minus. So what is the point? 20, 30. That's why it goes x minus the x coordinate, 20, and over here, y minus the y coordinate, 30. Okay, just a little review there. Looking at this table, this shows the world's population growing at a rapid rate. We want to identify the independent and the dependent variable. Okay, so what do you think depends on what? Do you think the year depends on how many people we have? Or do you think how many people we have depends on the year? How many people we have depends on the year. So since how many people we have does the depending, this is your dependent variable, and the year would be your independent variable. Remember, your independent pieces of information, those are things that are set in stone, not likely to change. The year just keeps going over and over and over and over. Every year it just gets another year, another year, another year. You can't do anything um, about that. But your population, that's more likely to fluctuate. It's more likely to vary, so that's dependent. <coughs> Okay, and remember independent are your x and dependent are your y. So the independent variable is the year. I'm going to go ahead and put x behind that. The dependent variable is the population. And I'm going to put a y behind that. Okay, and then down here we have a scatter plot for this data in the chart. So these points are just plotted and it says what relationship exists, if any, in the data. So this right here is what they call the line of best fit, also sometimes called a trend line. Since it's going uphill from left to right, this is showing a positive relationship, a positive correlation. Okay, so what I want to do, and this is a little new, but we have these skills. We want to write the slope-intercept form of an equation for the line of best fit. So we're trying to write an equation for the line of best fit. And this is the line of best fit that we want to um, write an equation for. And we're going to use this point that it goes through, which is the 1851,000. And we're going to use this point that it goes through, which is the 1998,5900. And those come straight from the table. There's the 1998,5900. Uh, and here is the 1850. 1,000. So those are the two points we're going to use. So we're going to write an equation through those two points. Okay, so remember, every time I give you points, I know that I'm going to want to write the equation in point slope form. That's how I want to start. So do I have everything I need? Do I have points? Yes. Do I have slope? No. So that is step one, find the slope. So that's when I follow my formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <clears throat> so how would I write y2 minus y1? 5900 minus 1000 over x2 minus x1, 1998 minus 1850. Okay, if I subtract 5900 minus 1000, that's 4900. If I subtract 1998 minus 1850, that's a 148. And I can reduce this fraction, but today I'm actually going to get a decimal instead. So 4900 
divided by 148 is about 33.1 if I round to the nearest tenths. And if I wanted to know what this was as a reduced fraction, I can go math enter enter, and I can see that the reduce, reduced fraction is 1225 over 37. But today for something different, I want to use the decimal equivalent for slope, which we normally don't do. Okay, step two, I'm going to use the slope I just found, which is about 33.1, and point slope form to write the equation. Okay, so let me go ahead and write down what point slope form looks like. Now I just need to pick the point that I want to use. Doesn't matter which one of these looks friendliest. I say let's use this very first point. That looks like the nicest numbers. So I go y minus, this one's the y coordinate, so which of these is the y coordinate? 1000. And then equals the slope, and we just found the slope to be 33.1. And then in parentheses it goes x minus, this right here wants the x-coordinate, so which of those is the x-coordinate? The 1850. And there's our equation in point-slope form. Okay, so now, since it said up here that I want to write the slope-intercept form, then I need to keep going. I need to make it look like y equals mx plus b. That's slope-intercept form, and this doesn't look like that yet. So my next move is to distribute this 33.1. So 33.1 times x, that's 33.1x. Now I need to take 33.1 times 18, negative 1850. So I'm going to use my handy dandy calculator. 33.1 times a negative 1850. And that makes a negative 61,235. <coughs> I'm going to bring down my y minus 1000. Okay, it still doesn't look like slope-intercept form yet because y is not by itself. So if I want to get this y by itself, how do I move my minus 1,000? I add 1,000, and I have to add 1,000 to both sides. So if I do that, the y drops down, the equals drops down, the 33.1 drops, the 33.1x drops down, and a negative 61,235 plus 1,000 makes a negative 60,000. 235. Okay, so there's our equation in slope-intercept form. So this is just something that we've done before. We've written equations of lines. It's just today we're writing an equation of a trend line or a line of best fit. And so you just have to know two points on the line, and as long as you know two points on the line, then those are the two points you'll use. You'll find your slope first, pick the point you want to use, and put it at point slope and then do your conversion to slope intercept. Okay, let's see what's on this next page. This says, why use the equation of the line of best fit? Well, we use it to predict. We want to use it to make predictions about what might happen down the road, what might happen in the future. That's the whole point of lines of best fit, of trend lines, to see what might happen later. So it's just an estimate, it's not necessarily true. So this says, using the equation of the line of best fit, predict the population in millions in the year 2012. Okay, so I'm going to write down the equation that I just found, which was y equals 33.1x minus 60,235. And do you remember the year? Was that the x or was that the y? It was the X. It's independent. Nothing's messing with the year. It keeps going one year after another year. The population, that is the dependent, so that's our Y. So I want to predict the population, which means I want to find Y. So if I want to find Y, I'm going to be putting something in X. And since I want to know something about the year 2012, I'm going to put 2012 in the X. So it's going to be 33.1 times 2012 and then I recopy the minus 60,235 and I'm just going to put this whole string in my calculator. So I'm going to type in the 33.1 parentheses 2012 close the parentheses minus 60,235 and we get 6362.2 and remember that this is in millions 
So I'm going to go ahead and write million people. So we're making a prediction in the year 2012 that this is how many million people that there will be. So that wasn't a year necessarily that was on here. Um, we could look at the graph and kind of make a prediction, but we can make a prediction from the equation as well. Okay, the next one says using the same equation predict the year where the population is 61,000, 60, sorry, 6,115.5 in millions. Okay, so this time I want to predict the year. Am I trying to find X or am I trying to find Y? This time I'm trying to find X. And so this is the population. Remember the population is the Y. So I'm going to put this in the Y and I'm going to solve the equation for X. So let me go ahead and recopy the equation that I found. And then I'm going to plug in what they just told me. So if this is the population, that's going to go in the Y. So I'm going to put the 6115.5 in the Y. And I'm going to recopy the whole right side of the equation. My goal now is to solve for X. So let me circle everything smushed with my X. What would I do to get rid of the minus 60,235? I'm going to add 60,235. And I do have to add it to both sides. The 33.1x drops down, the equals drops down. If I add these two together, I get 66,350.5. And now to get x by itself, I undo multiplication with division. So I divide both sides by 33.1. And let me grab my calculator for that. So I've got 66,350.5 divided by 33.1, and that gives me about 2,004.5. So we're talking about years here, so I'm going to say it's about 2,005. So if I want to know when the population is about 6,115.5 millions, that is in the year 2005. So the whole point of writing an equation of a line of best fit is to use that equation to make predictions. If I wanted to know what the population was going to be in 2050, I could put a 2050 right here in this X and work it out. That doesn't mean that's what it's going to be, but it could be. So that's all. Thank you.